Hi everybody, this is Alec at Render Performance here, and I've got Rob. Sup? Sup? With my nerd light. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So we wanted to just quickly do an update video to the video of setting up your turbo for the Render Performance 3.8 Turbo Kit. So this one, the reason why we wanted to do an update video is so that we could go over some of the changes that are here with the new Remnant Performance Turbos. Namely, the GTX is the entry level, and specifically right here, we've got a 70 Omega, a T51R 70 Omega, that uh, Rob has done his patented... Uh, purple. Purple, no all doubt, no doubt. I'm, I'm going to take this off if I have to look at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, yeah, it's all yeah. good. But yeah, so... Um, with this, we're just looking at how some of the things have changed. So the old ON3 Performance Turbos, uh, as you see in the video, those ones were purely oil cooled, meaning that the oil was coming in the top from the feed line port, and then it was just draining out the bottom. And, and whatever heat entered the CHRA or the center section of the turbo was then going through the dissipation through the oil and coming out through the uh, oil drain back into the oil pan. Uh, in this case, the new Renner Performance Omega series and even the GTX are all designed for um, really kind of road race kind of use. So, you know, you could do like 24 hour type stuff if you wanted to. I, I wouldn't necessarily say that's the best thing for you to do, but it could be done because what you're doing is you're, you're having oil cool and you're also having coolant cool the CHRA. So you can see here, there's, if you, when you get your 70 Omega and you'll see in the picture that we put up here, uh, you're gonna get a bunch of different fittings. They're gonna be two larger fittings, which are gonna be your fittings for your coolant. And you can put them either both in one side here, you can put one on either side if you wanted to, but I think the both in the inside is a great area to go. You can tuck it in really well. And if you do this here, you'll, your um, turbo kits will, with the 70 Omega will come with these new lines, coolant lines that you see right here. And so what you're gonna do is run that up here and you see right underneath the throttle body, there used to be some throttle body connections here uh, that would run from these coolant lines right down there, the hard lines into the throttle body. That basically what that does is heat up the throttle body in really cold climates. It's really for those who are like consistently starting the car at sub-zero uh, temperatures. Anybody who's not, you really don't need to run them. In fact, it's better you don't because the coolant is actually going to be artificially heating up the throttle body, which is obviously not the best for performance. So in this case, what you're gonna do is you're gonna remove the coolant uh, lines from the throttle body coming in, and you're actually going to just use the new lines that come in the kit to reattach to the same places there. And then the throttle body itself with the two hard lines that come out in the bottom, you're just gonna basically cap them off and that will be sufficient for that. So again, reutilizing the same stock locations there for the coolant ports with the new lines, you're done there. Now, back to the turbo. So if you see here, we have a lot of different connections than the ones we used to have on the ON3. Um, much of what you're doing here is basically the same. So you still have your oil feed line coming in. You still have that 90 degree AN4 uh, connection there that goes from male to female. What you have now is that brass fitting on the bottom there. And that fitting down there, there's two of them in your, uh, with your turbo, in your turbo kits. Um, they're one of them, if you look at them, you flip them up in one side, you'll be able to see the really tiny pinhole. And if you look at one of the, the uh, ones on the bottom of it, it's gonna have, and I'll show that up on the screen here, it's gonna have a smaller pinhole and one of them's gonna have a little bit larger pinhole. You're gonna wanna use the one with the smaller pinhole because our Genesis Coupes have a significant oil pressure at wide open throttle. So the smaller pinhole is gonna restrict that oil pressure uh, which again, you don't need that much oil flow coming into your dual ceramic ball bearing 70 Omega turbo. Um, so you're gonna wanna use a smaller one. For the GTX cars, you're gonna wanna use the larger one because uh, it's gonna give you just a little bit more oil flow for the journal bearing turbos. So that's kind of what it is. Now, last but not least, um, on the other side of the Omega series, there's actually two um, block off ports. So you're, they're actually gonna come pre-installed to your turbo. You can see them right there. Um, you're gonna wanna actually remove them. And all fittings that go into the turbo, you're actually gonna wanna use either some thread sealant or you can use the Teflon tape that comes in your kit. Mm -hmm. And Rob will actually give you a little bit of 
insight into some of the reason why you want to do that. Yeah, so this is the uh, the tape that comes with your kit, normal Teflon tape. Um, I actually have used Teflon tape on one half of my turbo and the liquid sealant on the other half. Uh, both of these are perfectly fine. This is fairly easy to apply. Uh, this comes out as a liquid and needs to cure overnight. Uh, there's pros and cons to both, but the point is you can use either one of these to secure the turbo. So the coolant ports on the sides, be they the ones that actually carry water, you still need to use either the tape or the thread sealant, but then you also have to take out the unused ports on mm -hmm. the other side and also apply thread sealant. Uh, last but not least, it's important that the oil feed, the brass oil feed fitting also has one of these on it. Yeah. The one place you don't want to put it is on the bottom with mm -hmm. the oil drain. That is just two bolts and an AN fitting. So yeah. use this stuff on every fitting except the bottom. Yeah, and make sure you use it on, like Rob was saying, on everything that is not AN. If right. it's an AN fitting you don't put it on the an side if it's a you know straight fitting or whatever or tapered fitting that's right those are the ones you want to use the other thing that's really important is how to use this stuff mm -hmm. uh, if you use the tape only put four revolutions of tape around the thread and yeah. try to skip the first thread if you can yeah if point. you use the liquid sealant you'll also want to skip the first thread but you can be pretty generous with this stuff so when it's fully tightened down it might smoosh out the top just wipe that off, come back 12 hours later, and it will seal just as well as the Teflon tape. Perfect. All right. So with that, I think you guys have a good overview of how to you know, properly set up your Omega Series turbos. Everything else is basically the same. Uh, obviously, we've moved to a V-band turbo mount bracket, but it hooks up basically the same uh, as the old T4 mounts that we had on the ON3 turbos. Um, with the V-band one, you're just going to, you have a, a V-band in your kit that has a two and a quarter. That's the one that you're going to use for hooking the turbo to the V-band turbo mount uh, bracket, which we'll show here. Um, and with this turbo mount bracket, the other side that you see there is what you're going to hook up to the up pipe. And that's a two and a half inch V-band. So other than that, uh, everything else basically is the same setup, same clocking of the turbo, pretty much everything else is the same, same oil drain. We have a new oil drain flange, but that's the only one you're going to get in the kit, so it's not a big deal for you. Um, so yeah, everything else sits up really well. Uh, the new Omega series have a little bit more clearance here between the back of the headlight and, and the actual compressor housing, so it makes it a little bit easier uh, fitment there. Other than that, like I said, everything else works the same way um same clamps same everything so one thing i wanted to show you guys uh that you that's not obvious when you install the turbo is how many different ways you can rotate this thing around to get mm -hmm. it to fit so if we come down into the front of the turbo you'll notice that my cold side of the turbo the purple side actually points downhill slightly mm -hmm. because i've loosened up the bolts on the back side and physically spun just the cold part of the turbo towards the driver's side wheel and that will help with fitment so you can spin this by itself and you can also spin the hot side of the turbo by itself and you can also spin all three clamps to the turbo up pipe and down pipe yeah so there's a lot of flexibility to move this turbo around to get the alignment that you need uh, last and most importantly try to make sure that the feed line and the drain line is straight up and down you can be slightly off center but make sure you're not like this as close to up and down as you can yeah. is perfect because it's gravity fed absolutely so yeah with that i think you guys have everything you need here for the new setup um and i uh, looking forward to seeing you all boosted as always happy boosting god bless and we'll catch you later